journals. And there was a, a older foreign teacher who came in and sat in the back, which always is a little alarm for me because I think his English is probably very good. I wouldn't know why he's there. And he immediately, I mean from the first sentence, I've given this speech many times, from the first sentence, he just says, stupid. <laughs> I, I just, he kept saying, again and again, for two hours, and I kept thinking, should I answer? And I thought, what can I say? No, I'm not stupid, yes you are, no, I'm not, yes you are. <laughs> I don't know how they can possibly resolve that. How can I answer that kind of question with any kind of good result? Or in the end, it was just, a losing question. There was no way to win with that kind of question. So I just ignored it for two hours. And it was very, very, very painful. It was hard. I, I felt like the speech was going badly. I felt like my rhythm was off. I felt like everything was bad. But at the end, I did the evaluation of the speech. It was the best evaluation I ever got. The audience appreciated that I had ignored this guy. They appreciated that I had just continued on. And it did not hurt my presentation at all. So this, in this kind of situation, I would just suggest you ignore it. If it's really that bad, if it's really a personal attack, my great hope is that you never have this experience. I hope most of the questions are more toward this side than that side. But I want to make you aware that there is a spectrum here of motivation uh, that you may have when you receive questions. Don't let an interesting but unrelated question start you on a new speech. I know that this is interesting for you, but you only have three minutes for Q&A, and you shouldn't use all of that three minutes uh, for one question and then go into someone else's time. Don't let your presentation time continue thinking the Q&A time is extra time for your speech. And consider questions in honor. Good speeches make good questions. Uh, Boring speeches put people to sleep and make them leave. So the fact that they were awake and remembered what you said is a compliment. Here's a three-step template for answering Q&A. First, listen to the whole question before you answer it. Sometimes the speaker will take a long time to get to his real point, and you have to listen. Second, thank the person for asking the question, even if you're not thankful. <laughs> lie, lie. <See? laughs> and then follow the template below. Repeat the question so everyone can hear, respond to the question, and then review. Does that answer your question? Go back to the questioner. If the question is angry or personal, do not review. Just don't look at it again. <laughs> Answer and look away. Any other questions over here? <laughs> if you keep going back, you're just going to go into a, a negative situation. Uh, here are some additional tips. Ask people to stand up when they ask the question. It will make them you know, more responsible for what they say and also let people hear what they have to say as well. What if you don't know the answer? Of course, you can admit that you don't know the answer, but you can't do that every time. You can't just say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so what are some other things you can do if you don't know the answer? Well, I always tell my students to suggest their professor. <laughs> Your professor is sitting there. He gave you this topic. Let him help you. <laughs> say, my professor has studied this a lot, professor. <laughs> Delay. Say, that's a good question. Hmm. Are you Ask a question. Could you clarify what you mean? Sometimes when he asks the question again, it's much easier. Sometimes when he repeats the question, it's a lot better than the first one. Admit you don't know it, but we we'll research it for them. Of course, that's always a good option. You could repeat the question in a slightly different way. Maybe the way you repeat the question is easier for you to answer. So actually, you change the questions, what you did, just a little bit. And that's okay, you see this all the time, all the time in conferences. When they repeat, they will change it. Or sometimes, they just answer a different question. You know, that happens too. I've seen that frequently, where the, the questioner will say, can you talk about dogs? And the speaker, yes, dogs are wonderful animals that hate cats. Cats! And they start talking about <laughs> And most of the time, I will look around at the audience, and no one notices they're nodding their head. It seems to work. It seems to work. If you still don't have a good answer after all of this, then you can say, uh, let's talk after my talk. I mean, that's always appropriate. 
What if you can think of nothing to say? Don't just stand there and slowly die painfully. Smile. Start to tell a story. I've seen that done before. It has to be related in some way. While you're telling a short story, sometimes you can think about the answer. You can also change the topic of the question to something that you know about. Here's a key one. Mm. What if you don't understand the question because of the speaker's poor English? Especially at international conferences, this can be a problem. And I'll give you the example of one of my PhD students recently at a conference. Oh. There was a, at the end of the speech, there was a guy, a Japanese, someone from Japan, a Japanese gentleman, who raised his hand and asked a question. And basically, the question sounded like this. <laughs> Just like that. And my student said, sorry, what? He says, <laughs> and my student said, again, <laughs> and this was like ping pong. <laughs> For a while. And then, and I was sitting there thinking, oh, please, please, someone, stop it. The chair, the chair tries to be helpful and says, the chair says, I think he means, and the Japanese guy, chon, chon, chon. <laughs> Someone else in the audience said, maybe he means. And it was like English guessing game. Five minutes. It was so painful. And the poor Japanese guy, his face got red and he just ran out. And I told my student later, I said, listen, next time that happens, just answer any question and keep going. Because, you know, the, the questioner will be so thankful. He will find you later and write down his question and you can talk about it together. This is not the place for the English guessing game. You just come up with anything to end a, and finish. I, right now I'm teaching a class in the science part in Shinju, and I have a student from, from India, an engineer. He's a very nice guy. And his boss has sent him because he hopes that after taking my class, he will be able to understand what this engineer is saying. But I don't think I have helped at all. Because every class, he's a great guy, I like him, he'll raise his hand. Question, and I always think, no, no. <laughs> and I'll say, yes, and he'll say, how many, how many, how many? And I just always say, good point, thank you. <laughs> in English, and I, I'm concerned about just ruining the speech and the class. So in this kind of situation with English, just move on. Don't let that destroy this poor questioner and your speech by becoming something that it shouldn't be. If it's important, he will find you later. Write it down, and you can write an answer, and you can work it out. What if someone keeps interrupting you while you are speaking? This is very stressful. <coughs> Very stressful. What can you do? He keeps coming in with loud comments all the time. In the beginning, first thing you should do, if it's really short, just answer and keep speaking. But if it keeps going on, you may have to say, uh, Sir, can you please wait for the question period? If it continues on after that, look at the chair. This is the chair's job. But the chair usually is sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> Not helpful. <laughs> so if the chair doesn't save you, then the problem with this kind of interruption is that the audience doesn't know that this is a problem for you. Because you keep answering him, so the audience thinks it's okay. So the audience doesn't help you, doesn't give the strong social pressure to the questioner. So what you need to do, and this is very hard to do, but you have to, you, in some instances you have to say, please sir, allow me to finish my talk, and then just keep going without looking at him. What will happen? The audience now realizes that you have problems and that this guy's giving you problems, and they will turn like this. <laughs> and they will give some little noise. <laughs> and then he will, he will crouch down. So let the audience help you with the social pressure. But you have to make a strong statement first. Otherwise, they don't know. They don't know that it's a problem. Uh, remain after your presentation session. Again, sometimes your best feedback comes then. You get a lot of questions as well. Okay. For more information about this, I wrote a handout, which I have for you today, also on PDF format on my website. I have written a lot of stuff in Chinese about technical writing and some about conference presentation. It's available no charge at my site. You can download it, as well as my slides. I have a lot of PowerPoint slides that I've done on different speeches. You can find editing.tw. As the name suggests, we modify over 20...